So welcome back to another exciting episode at Basin Motorsports. So as you notice today, we are definitely on the road and we've got the micro dog in the back running side to side because she is so excited of what we got going on. So I had mentioned previously on an episode that I wanted to kind of look at my next vehicle, what it was going to be, and I wasn't quite sure. A lot, uh, maybe maybe another Fox body. I thought about doing a, a C10 build since they're getting kind of popular, but they're also starting to get pricey. So fate, fate intervened. There's a creeper tin in the back. So, <laughs> so what that means is that uh, a couple nights ago, I got a message from my brother-in-law that he saw on Facebook, somebody had a Mustang. It's an 86 hatchback basically sitting in a field rotting away that somebody was hoping would come literally drag it out of the field. So what we're doing now is we borrowed my father-in-law's diesel. We uh, are going to cruise up to Redmond, Oregon, kind of central Oregon, and probably go get this hatchback out of the field. I really don't know anything about it. It's not even the guy. The guy selling it is not even the one that owns it. The owner is going to show up to sign it. Lost title, doesn't run. Um... Supposedly not rusty, and the interior looks pretty good, or he says it looks good, so we're going to find out. But uh, once we get there, we'll see, yank it up on a trailer, and by golly, we might have a new project vehicle back at the shop. <laughs> would have helped in this case unfortunately it was all a matter of not being able to get anything in the right spot Break on just came off of Mustang Road picking up a Mustang okay so that was the absolute Worst case scenario, I have dealt with getting a damn car. So, it is an, in fact, an 86 GT V6 3.3 automatic. No idea why it doesn't run. Been sitting there literally in that field for three years. The guy bought it, never titled it. So, now I don't even know who actually owns the title to it, but it's at least mine. So, if I can't get a title, it's going to be a track car. So, we, uh, could, of course, you can't go to the radiator support because it completely tears it. So I ended up going to the sway bar. I know. Shouldn't have done that, but honestly, I had almost no other damn choice to get that Turn thing up there. And the uh, the come along was absolutely not going to work. So we ended up using some tie-down straps, as you saw, to winch it up there. Clear. To winch it up on the trailer and... Uh, we got it there. It took us about an hour, honestly. Um, anyway, we're on the road home, and uh, I'm tired. I'm ready for a uh, cold beverage at this point. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. It was worth 500 bucks to come up and get it. 500 bucks. Jury's out. <laughs> okay, jury's out, but not sure what I'm going to do yet. All right, so we obviously made it home with the car. No issues on it uh, other than tires are flat and I'm gonna throw some air in there. So my wife asked yesterday before we left, are you sure the tires are in good condition since it's been sitting? And I said, sure, 
The guy selling the car says the tires are in great shape. They're half bald and they are holding half air. So if you're going to go look at a car in a field, make sure you take a manual or a compressor, something they'll plug in like a cigarette light or something. So should have listened to my wife on that one. Pushing a car with uh, half flat tires up a ramp to go on a trailer really sucks. Okay, so before I take the car off the trailer, let me make a couple notes to show you what I've got. So I told you it's an 86 hatchback LX, not the GT, nothing fancy. It's got the 3.8 liter V6 in it with three speed automatic. Wheels? I think they're the original 14 inchers. 195 series tires. These things are almost pizza cutters. One thing to note though, the molding on it, almost perfect early. I mean, it's worn, it's an 86, but look at the door fit. This car has never been wrecked. Pinch welds, pinch welds are almost not bent. Can you believe that? So what I've figured out on this car is that not wrecked, it's all original except for the tailpipe behind the muffler and the cassette player. Cassette player. Can you believe that? It's a dual knob. I'll show you when I get in the interior. But everything else, it's all 1986 glory. All right, so with the hatchback off the trailer, let's take a look at what we have to work with. So obviously looking at the back, you can see the taillights are going to have to be replaced. They are siliconed to death. These things are so bad, but everything's good other than some surface rust. Bumper's actually in good shape, which just needs to be repainted or just basically restored, essentially. Let me open the hatch. I'll show you what's inside. So inside the hatch, literally everything is there complete. Carpet's obviously dirty, ripped up a little bit, but it actually still has the factory spare tire in there. Can you believe it? 14 inch spare tire from 1986. No rust that I can find and everything looks complete. So if I show you on this side, on the driver's side, you can see on the, the roof, definitely some surface rust and that's just from sitting out in a desert climate, the paint wore through and it's got some surface rust. Not through, all it needs to be done is just to clean it up, conserve the metal, uh, just get rid of the rust. And then everything else just really needs to be restored. Probably, uh, Probably going to be paint, not painted, I shouldn't say painted. It's going to be vinyl wrapped. I will wrap it later on. My wife says she wants purple, so we've got to figure out what purple color this will go to. And then some wheels to complement it to make it look good. Now on the passenger side, same condition. A little bit of surface rust, not big deal. All the moldings are there. The windows are good. They go up and down. They're manual windows. Mirror obviously just needs to be cleaned up. And really all the trim is there. It just needs to be replaced. Seals are obviously bad. I mean, they're originals and they're all siliconed up because nobody knew who to replace them, but that's okay. Under the engine is pretty interesting. Now, what we're rocking in this baby is the 3.8 liter V6. Kind of the, uh, the mid-grade, I guess you'd call it. Usually the four-cylinder and the V8 are the ones that everybody wants to build, either a turbo four or a V8, etc. Nobody really wants to build the V6. So there's not a lot of aftermarket support for it, obviously, sitting around. One thing I did find out, um, the 9495 Thunderbird Super Coupes were running this engine, or a version of this engine, with a supercharger, an Eaton supercharger. Puts out around 230 for horsepower. Nothing like crazy, but this only puts out 120. So bump into 230, get 110 horse and then maybe some extra work to it. You might push 250 out of the motor. That's not bad. The car's ready for a V6, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking keeping the V6. It's different, right? It's different. Everybody wants the four cylinder, the V8. I'm pretty all about different, as you can tell with the wide Fox. Now running inside, everything here is all complete. Nothing's been taken out. The radio's been replaced. It's an Optimus dual knob tape player, cassette player, seriously. So everything else, obviously the dash is all cracked up. Um, but I think this is regatta blue. I'm not sure of the color. I need to check the the uh, 
build tag basically to figure it out. It's either charcoal or regatta blue. I'm not real sure. Maybe charcoal. But it's all here. It's full console. It's three speed automatic. Seats. There's a couple spots on it, but not bad. Um, flip this around. You can see this is pretty indicative of all the seals. They are siliconed like you wouldn't believe just because they're old. They're probably all the originals. But hey, we've already replaced them in the wide fox. We'll just do this one up too. Seals all around. Seals for everybody. All right, so I turned the camera off for a second and uh, thinking, what's this under my foot? So I literally, remember I said this thing has no title, right? So the guy I bought it from said he wasn't the owner. He never registered it. He bought it three years ago after it suddenly stopped running. So he basically bought it for scrap value, or he said he offered it double scrap value. So he sat it in the field, he's going to get to it, never got to it, so I bought it, brought it home, right? So I just found a receipt for an oil change place for the owner back in uh, February of 2015. So I think I have the owner of the, it's probably on the title. And now I need to uh, probably do some investigative research and give this lady a call. But the mileage is listed at 166000 so that's not bad considering this is an 86 and everything's all original. Whew, that was awesome. So when you're always doing some automotive archaeology, you always find some good stuff. So late model restoration doesn't have a console with cup holders, but hey, free cup holders right here. I don't need a $150 console. I've got dual cup holders. And Rubbermaid also makes this one. Check that out. Coin purse or whatever else to go in there. Triple cup holders in the 86. You cannot beat this for the money. So now that you've seen the car, let me ask you, what would you do to build this thing? I'm kind of thinking of doing, honestly, a restoration. The V6 really isn't a performance engine, but because this car is complete, I feel like because all the restoration parts are available, why tear up an original complete car? The Wide Fox wasn't. I knew it was kind of, you know, it was mixed in parts and everything else. But this thing is literally time capsule other than it needs restoration which is why i got it to rescue it so what would you guys like to see built better v6 single turbo kit supercharger swap i mean the sky's the limit it's going to take a while honestly i've got to finish wide fox and this will probably be more like a winter build to work on it um and i promised myself i'm not going to have more than one car up on jack stand so i can have roll out so this will stay on wheels It'll stay intact for a while other than I want to get it running and fix, your, uh, fix that stuff. So you guys let me know. What do you want to see? And that's it for this time from Basin Motorsports. We'll see you next time. Okay, update. Before I send you guys away, two sprays of starting fluid and I put in a battery that literally came out of the Wide Fox, the original one. Car started. It's been sitting three years, literally. It's purring at 1,000 RPM. I don't know what's wrong with this car to make it not do that. Fluids are good, needs fluids change, obviously. And the air conditioning works. Seriously, it blows cold. Now I'm really scared of this car. It stopped running and they sold it for scrap and I fired it up with a turn of a key. Is this thing gonna blow up on me? Guess you're gonna have to watch to find out.